What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Flare Podcast. I'm James Walter, and with me, as always, Mr. Chris Garcia. I'm really surprised you saw me. I wore my camouflage so you didn't see me today. Well, I can see that hat, <laughs> and uh, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. It really does. It's very bright. I think I wore it last week. Beats I should, me. I should have worn my California one. I don't keep a checklist of what you wear. <laughs> Sometimes I pick out a shirt and go, did I wear this shirt last week on the podcast? I hope not. Just know, if you see me wear the same shirt twice in a row, I do wash my clothes after I wear them. So it's not like I'm just, you know, wearing the same clothes. They probably just ended up back on top of the pile Probably. from washing them. Just to get that out of the way. Why were, uh, what do they call it, airing the laundry? Is that what it's called? Jeez. Um, drying out the laundry? I don't know. Whatever that thing is with the laundry when you tell stuff that like is kind of out. I don't know. Anyways. Um, did you know about this whole thing with Apple? I didn't. Apparently you, you didn't know about mm-hmm. Apple and the FBI. So I wasn't going to talk about this because it's just been all over. But I guess you didn't know about this. So we'll go ahead and talk about it real quick. So basically, um, the FBI has one of the iPhones from one of the people from San Bernardino. Yes, I do. I, I and, didn't hear this on the news the other day. And basically they want Apple to create something so that they can get into the phone basically a backdoor now the fbi says they don't want apple to make a backdoor they just want them to write some code so that after 10 guesses if they incorrectly guess the password that the iphone doesn't wipe itself which is what they do Mm -hmm. if you have that set up to do so you don't have to set it to do that but i guess most people do because they're worried about their phones getting stolen i don't get people but anyways um, Apple, of course, is refusing to do it, saying that if they put it in such a back door, and like I said, they are kind of making it sound like the FBI wants them to do more than just make it so you can guess infinite passwords. Either way, Apple is saying that if they do this, that it not only can be used by the F- FBI in this instance, but in other instances where they may or may not have a search warrant, and also then it can be used by any other nefarious person who would mm. like to try and gain access to your phone. Now, of course, they spin it in such a way that it's going to open up this back door. The hackers can get into remotely or, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's kind of true. If you put in back doors like that, Apple has spent a long time trying to one thing is making sure their phones are secure. Yes. Always. And that the encryption is top notch and to implement any sort of back door, um, especially in the time frame that the FBI would want them to do it in. Mm hmm. Um, would definitely introduce a lot of risk that they don't want to put into their operating system, obviously. Now, you could argue that they could load it only onto that device and not actually make it as part of iOS. Um, But then now the FBI does still have that so they could reverse engineer it out, which unlikely because they're not exactly known for having the top-notch computer experts, Mm. experts. But anyways, that's basically the issue. Um, a lot of tech companies have sided with um, Apple on this. I agree. And uh, I don't know. I'm kind of in the middle of this of the the road here. Like, I get where the FBI is coming from. Like, they're like, no, this is like a terrorist, and like, this is their phone, and like, we need to get this information. And like, if it was a computer and they had a search warrant, or if it was like a phone company and they had a warrant, that information would be handed over to them. But since it's, it's on this iPhone. And they're asking Apple to make this thing that Apple's like, we don't want to do that because it's going to compromise for all of our users. And I get where they're coming from because, you know, we all want our privacy and our security. And um, especially if you have your phone locked, like you don't want people to be able to like load this software on there and then guess your password Mm -hmm. infinite times, especially as more and more people move over to having like apple id on their phones or on android having google wallet or if you have a blackberry well no one's going to try and steal that no. anyways but um it's it's a big deal on both sides and they both have some valid points and they both are um exaggerating their viewpoint a bit to try and make their point across um ultimately if the courts do decide that the fbi has a valid case and that apple needs to comply with their request because they have all these warrants and whatever ultimately apple will probably comply with that because otherwise they will be fined heavily and or allow them thrown in jail or both or shut down there's a lot of things that 
if Apple as a company doesn't comply, that could hurt not only the company, but its employees. So ultimately, um, if the court does decide that the FBI has the right to ask them to do this and that they have to reply, they have to comply because of the warrants and everything, and it's a terrorist and the, um, what was the act for that uh, Bush did so that the uh, Patriot Act, the, mm. kind of all that stuff, then the Apple's going to have to comply because they won't want to risk all those other, yeah. although they have a lot of cash, they could fight it for a long time. Mm. And by the time they're done fighting, it will even be relevant anymore. Who knows? Uh, like I said, I'm kind of in the middle and think that ultimately it's going to come down to the courts, them deciding, listening to all the information, all the arguments, mm -hmm. you know, not just the bits and pieces that we get through the news, which probably is even skewed towards which side of the argument they're on. So we'll have to wait and see. Gotcha. But that's, that's that in a nutshell, I guess if you didn't know what all was going on. So how about we talk about more interesting stuff yeah, now? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so Oculus Rift earlier, you know, announced that the Rift is going to be $600, right? Okay. And it's coming out sometime this year. I think it got pushed back to July, I think is what I heard. Well, at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, HTC announced what their VR is going to cost. Guess how much it's going to cost? Uh, five fifty. No. Five hundred. No. Higher. Yes. Really? Yes. Seven hundred. You're close. Seven fifty. Closer. Seven sixty nine. Still not there yet. Eight hundred. Well, you're a dollar over. Seven ninety nine. Seven ninety nine. Yeah. Did they not learn from Sony when they released the PS3 and was like available for five hundred ninety nine US dollars? And everyone was like. Um, that's too expensive. Yeah. Even though it's cutting edge and has a Blu-ray player, which at the time was still the cheapest Blu-ray player you could buy in Sony's defense. Um, too expensive for a game console. This $800 for a VR headset by HTC, which I believe theirs is in conjunction with Valve, correct? You I think. know more than I do. Um, a lot of good stuff going on there. Um, if Oculus is priced at $600, and they have the backing of all the Kickstarter people, which are going to basically get shafted and not get any of the rewards that they said they were supposed to get since Facebook bought them. Mm. And that's just the way Kickstarter is. That's a bummer. I feel for all of you guys, but there's nothing you can do. Um, and I mean, if Facebook was like, this is a $600 thing, and you know Facebook is going to price it as low as they can because their whole thing is getting stuff out there and then selling advertising. So they're not going to try and sell this piece of hardware to make a ton of money. They're just going to try and get it out there and then let, you know, like Zynga, whoever's making all the Facebook games these days, get games on it and make their money that way. Um, so I don't, now, you know, a, the HTC one does come with two games, apparently, mm -hmm. one of which is Job Simulator. So you can pay $800 to simulate having a job. That's because you, you you're going to need a job to pay $800 exactly. for that. Um, so... Uh, I'm gonna say uh, that's a that's a wait and see what happens because we don't know much about it. Overall, HTC, I'm not very pleased with their phones. Are not that good. Uh, well, most of the world would disagree with you. Yeah. Because outside of the U.S., they have a huge, huge market. market share. So this is gonna be HTC is gonna have a bigger market elsewhere. Well, because uh, everyone I've known who has an HTC doesn't like them, or well, they do that's like because them. Because they probably bought the cheaper end HTC. HTC that's M8. part of the problem. The ones that we see the most having problems are the M8s. Yeah, the problem is you got to buy the nicer HTC phones. Well, we have the new one, HTC M9. I, I don't really keep up with the HTC phone numbers because gotcha. the number makes less sense to me than anything <laughs> in the world, except for maybe like Sony, how they number things. Um, but no, outside the US, HTC is a huge phone maker. Um, them and Samsung have huge market share. Uh, Samsung, of course, as we know, in the U.S. has the biggest share of the Android market, but worldwide oh, yeah. they do well as well. Uh, where the iPhone is uh, not as high as you would think it is in the rest you, of the world. You would think it would be very high. I, I mean, you hear you, you would hear think stories so. of people, you know, doing whatever they can to get a uh, to get one down in you know South America. Yeah, but it's the market share outside the U.S. on the iPhone. Uh, it's not, I mean, even in the U.S. anymore, it's really not as big of a margin as it used to be. Not the point. The point is, HTC thinks they have something special here. 
let's hope for their sake that they do. Also, they uh, better hope that Sony, whose VR should be announced, the pricing and all that, it's probably gonna be really announced soon. Uh, hope that they don't go for that $400 range mm-hmm. because they, they could. They've been making so much money from the PlayStations that they could price the PlayStation VR at the same price as the console and be like, look, buy a PlayStation and the PlayStation VR for the same price as an HTC uh, Vive, I think that's, is what it's called. Yeah, that's a very good idea. And then on top of that, to even use the HTC Vive, you still have to have a like desktop that can run it. So it's probably going to cost you another $1,000 in your computer mm-hmm. unless you already have a gaming computer. Same thing with Oculus, of course. But I don't think the Oculus needs quite as high specs as the HTC, maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe it can work on a broader range or something. I don't know exactly. But, uh, yeah, that's going to not be good for HTC. Oculus will be fine, like I said, because they have Facebook behind them. And there's a lot of people already committed to that system Mm -hmm. just because of Kickstarter and Facebook and all that. Uh, PlayStation, though, has the largest market available off the get-go because there's a lot of PlayStation 4s out there. You don't have anything to say? No, no. You have a PlayStation 4. I do have a PlayStation 4. I'm very pleased. Would you buy a VR headset? Any of the three? Um, I'll think about it, but most likely not anytime soon. Well, that's because you're not cutting edge, Chris. No, I'm not cutting edge. But... I gotta get that PlayStation VR when it you, comes Yeah, out. you'll probably get it. I'll probably come over and Um, mooch. I'm gonna pass on Oculus just because I don't want facebook that close to my face yeah sorry facebook it's not necessary oh no honestly it has nothing to do with facebook it really has to do with the fact that um i already have the playstation ready to go i have a desktop that could run the virtual reality stuff most likely but i'm more interested in the playstation vr just because like i said i already have the playstation 4 sitting there ready to go and i think there'll be a lot more things that I can do with that because of the fact that I use the PlayStation so much mm-hmm. already. So, well, now we're on the subject. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not a Samsung user. Do no. you know anybody that I is don't a Samsung think user? I own a single Samsung thing anymore. Okay. But did you hear uh, you, no, you did hear um pre-order started yesterday. Uh, and Samsung's uh, S7 mm-hmm. and the S7 Edge are coming out mm-hmm. in March. Every year. Every year. I mean, the S7 doesn't come out every year, but yeah. Um, I don't know much about the phone. I haven't. There's honestly, really not that much. It's the same size, faster mm-hmm. processor, better camera. That's probably I mean, about it. Samsung does really well with their phones. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why, because as an Android user, I don't like their interface. You like Droid. No, it has nothing to do with Droid. It's like they put this skin on top of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I don't get why they're doing that. The stock Android runs fine. It has all the stuff you need. Uh, I mean, and to be f- fair, when Android first came out, every Android maker was putting their own skin on top of Android because mm-hmm. that was the thing to do. And Motorola stopped very quickly because one, it's just pointless. And two, you have a much slimmer OS mm-hmm. and it's a lot more efficient. Which which phone carriers use Android? You got LG, uh, Samsung. Phone makers, you mean? Yes, phone makers. LG, Samsung, um, HTC, HTC, Motorola, Lenovo, Ooh. whatever you want to call that company now. Does uh, I believe Sony uses Oculus? Android? Um, pretty much everyone, but Sony. Bla- but pretty much everyone, but, but Apple. No, uh, BlackBerry has an Android phone also. Really? Wow. Yeah. Uh, Windows doesn't actually. So Nokia, I don't think they have an Android phone. I don't. The, maybe? Nokia Lumia uses like. I a, think that's only a, on Windows, right? Because Microsoft bought Nokia, right? I think so. I just, I just. I know, know there was rumor or something that they were making an Android phone. I don't know if that actually happened or not. I don't remember. I just know my friend has a Nokia Lumia and it uses like a, a Windows. Yeah, it's Windows style. 10. It's, well, it might be Windows 8. It depends yeah, on I which Nokia an, he has. I think has. it's an 8 because he's an old. Uh, one. Windows 8 was not good. No, definitely not. No. Our least favorite. Windows 8. Uh, yeah, is, just, I think it's worse than Vista. Uh, well, I don't know about that. The only thing that makes 8 possibly worse than Vista is the fact that if you're on a desktop, it wants you to boot in to Metro instead of mm. to the desktop view. Uh, otherwise, once you get into the desktop viewer, it's basically Windows 7. 
I hate the whole like screen with everything on it. Yeah, that's the metro interface. Yeah, I just I don't like the metro interface, but I can use it if it was a touch screen based. And that's computer. why they did it. But they should have gave you the option to boot right into the standard desktop, which mm. they did in 8.1. Most people kind of overlook that because of their hate of Windows 8. So I don't know. Like I said, uh, not worse than Vista, uh, except for the fact that it boots into that every time unless you tell it to. I guess I was just used to using Vista but, for a long time. I got used to it, and that's what helped see, me. See what happened seven. is you don't remember how bad Vista was when it launched. You're used to after all the service packs. I came think that's out. what it probably was. Yeah, if you had Vista when it launched, you would not be saying that eight was worse than Vista. I had Vista probably in 2007. Oh well, you had it after a lot of the service packs came out. That's then. probably what it was then. Yeah, yeah. If you switched to Vista when it first came out, you would have had a different thing you were saying. My, my parents were using um, XP up until a year and a half ago. I used XP until I switched to Windows 7. And some of my laptops ran XP for longer than that. Um, a lot of people are still using XP, even though Microsoft has stopped officially supporting it. Which, hey guys, you might want to switch because those oh. security updates, you're going to get really far behind really fast. You might as well And that's a little seven. vulnerable considering you're probably using... Windows XP for your business, mm -hmm. if you haven't switched yet, you probably don't want to be doing that. A lot of the business computers, like with my with mine, they use seven because seven our, works great. Because our uh, I think our systems that we use, mm -hmm. you know, they don't work on a ten yet. Sure. So they have to come up with that. Well, I don't IT people are kind of funny about what will and won't work on newer operating systems. They changed from seven to ten. There was there wasn't a lot of software that wouldn't be compatible some way. It's more a matter of like having to work through all the bugs and you no one just wants to deal with it is why businesses don't upgrade right away. And I get it. It's a pain and it's not worth the possibly lost business while you're making that transition. There, there were computers out there that were still using like the gray bar at the bottom. There's was people like, that there ridiculous. was businesses that still were running like Windows 98.5, Windows 98 because like they had like this piece of software that they used. It was simple. And it just worked and they didn't want to upgrade or switch, which, you know, if you're not connected to the internet, that's fine. Exactly. I mean, if you have something simple. If you're simple, connected to the internet though, that's not safe. I mean, if you, all you have to do is, you know, count cash in and that's about it you could probably use i don't a care how interface. complicated what you're trying to do it's more a matter of if you're connected to the internet you want something that is keeping up to date with the different methods people are using to break into your system gotcha that's the real issue with not upgrading in my opinion um on your phone it's a little different because the, the updates roll out so fast that some people don't want to because they're worried about you know possible things not working right mm -hmm. or you know fixing one bug and making another uh it, it's so rare that something that actually breaks your phone happens that i just update everything right away because i just want to see what's new gotcha and i don't worry about it some people are really worried about it though but i'm not nope not at all all right. Well, that went a long time. Yeah, we were just everywhere, which is fine. We, we cruise. Yeah. What do you say we take a break? Okay. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about some stuff happening this year other than VR. So don't go away. We'll be right back.